It is a pleasure to have all of you here tonight. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you for waving, Glory. I got all the waving now. So it is a pleasure to have all of you here this morning. Welcome one and all. As always, there are a few different announcements uh, that I would like to highlight. The first of which is, if you would uh, like an update in regard to the uh, how Ed Thornton is healing, you can ask him after worship because he's up there in the balcony. Yeah. Central and South America that uh, uh, Renee has gone to, 
not CPA, we've been to a couple of times, right? These are some places that we have impacted just in the last couple of years through the missions program for the church. A couple of things that we're looking to do this year and in the, in the, in the not so distant future. Locally here in Hunterdon County, right? There are a lot of organizations that we impact. There's a lot of different things that we do. We give some money. We have an opportunity to physically participate. Larger in New Jersey, we, we're getting more connected with Make a Wish, right? So there's a lot of opportunities there. Globally, we have the, the water, uh, the well project, the, the water roller project. Plus, we have our missionaries in Niger, Jeremy and Susan. We pray for them every every Sunday, and we hear their names, but we got to remind them that they're actually people that are you know, committed their life in Niger, doing all the tremendous amount of work. Uh, we also have a mission trip coming up in North Carolina in the summer. Right, so there's local, there's regional, there's national, there's global. There's a lot of ways that we can make an impact. So my question to you, in the spirit of stewardship, is how much impact and what, what will your impact be? That's it. All right. So stewardship will the stewardship campaign will be ongoing over the course of the next uh, month, and we will be hearing different messages. There will be uh, correspondence that will be sent out to you. Uh, including an estimate, estimate of giving cards. However, as we're able to hear from Thirst's presentation, this isn't, just a, this isn't just about money. That's part of it. But what will your impact be? How will you be impactful in the service? So those are the announcements that I have. I invite you to look over the rest of them and let us worship the Lord together. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth.
love God and walk in His way. Hold fast to God in everything you do. Oh, 
for each of us because we hear it differently, we live different lives. What does it mean for you to love God? Because that's love for him. The second law is like, you shall love your neighbor as God is first love for you. God has loved you and wants us to share that love with the world, out into the world, and let it flow. God has blessed us in remarkable ways. Let that grace be felt. I'd like to invite the kids to come on down front so we can chat for a couple of minutes. <laughs> I want to read just a little bit of it, and 
we're, we're going to talk about. So it's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. Okay? So that's the name of it. Let me, and I'm going to read just a, a, a quick little bit here at the beginning. So, the boy. The boy is lonely when the mole first surfaces, when the mole first shows up. They spend time together gazing out into the wild, out into the world. I think the wild is a bit like life. Frightening sometimes, but beautiful. Okay, semicircle, come in, if you can't see it. Or maybe that's just me. Come in, come on. So there's not a lot of words, pictures, okay? So this is a book for everybody. So this is the boy, that's the mole down here. And this is the boy saying, hello. This is the boy, this is the mole. The mole says, I'm so small. Yes, said the boy. Yes, said the boy, but you make a huge difference. All right, so what are they? Boy, boy helps the mole up on to, like the boy helps the mole up on to a tree limb. Okay. There's a tree, there's a tree limb. What do you want to be when you grow up? The, the mole asked, so they're out there on the tree. What do you want to be when you grow up? And the boy said, kind. What do you want to be when you grow up? You're going to hear that a lot. You're going to be told that you need to think about it a lot. And so often, how we hear that is, what job am I going to do? What thing am I going to do? Who am I going to be? If you're not kind, very little of it's going to matter. God isn't looking for us to be this picture perfect thing of what it means to be a. a Good boy, you know, a good young adult, a good adult that lives in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. That is not what God is looking for. God is saying, I want you to be kind. There are a lot of times I ask you, what does it mean to love? How do you love someone? Today I'm just going to give you a statement. God wants us to. wants us to be kind. What do you want to be when you grow up? As you start moving into the rest of the day, as you move to Sunday school, as you start interacting with your teacher and your other, and your other classmates, as you go home and you hang out with your brothers and your sisters, as you hang out with your parents and your grandparents, what do you want to be? as we are able to be kind, we are able to show and share God's love. So I'm not sure if the adults who are listening necessarily realize this, but I'm going to look at them for a second, okay? What do you want to be when you grow up? We're still growing up. God, you want us to show and share your love. So help us to do that. Help us to do that <laughs> by being kind. By being caring. By living a life that is more than just for us and the things that, that impact us the most. Help us to be kind. 
to those who are immediately around us, to our, to our brothers and sisters, to our moms and dads, and also to the people that we just see <coughs> once and then they're gone. Help us to be kind so that your love might be shown and shared. All these things we do pray in Jesus. We talk and pray together, I think. Our Father, who art in heaven, opportunity to be kind, to be loving, to be present, because I'm trying to be in control. For those women who are hearing this and going, well, that kind of sounds like me too. I mean, this message is for you. But gentlemen, be open to the stuff that shows up in your life. As it starts knocking on the door and you know, it's good, and you're going, this is not comfortable, this is not easy. Look, it may not be comfortable, it may not be easy, but you, you are a child of God. Feel it. Let it out. Share it with someone else. Let God bless you as you hold that truth, that reality, out into your life. Our next hymn this morning is hymn number 41. God is so good.
and let us pray. God, may the thoughts and meditations of our hearts and our minds and the words from my mouth be acceptable in your sight. So we open this, your holy word. Amen. Our opening passage is taken from the 119th Psalm, the first eight verses. On the most basic of levels, we should think of the Psalms as the lyric sheets to songs, because that's what they were. However, because of the the distance that we have to the Psalms due to language, history, culture, there are many times when we are simply not able to appreciate that reality. The 119th Psalm is certainly an example of that, where the separation leaves us feeling unable to appreciate what is actually before us. So to begin with, this, this 119th Psalm is the longest of all the Psalms, and it is able to speak, it speaks to the joy of God through the law, the joy of God's law. It is comprised of 22 different sections. How did the author come up with 22 sections? Well, there is, there are, there's one section for each letter of the alphabet. Each section is eight letters long, possibly because there are eight synonyms that are used to describe the law, and each one of those lines starts out with the letter that corresponds to that particular section. In and of itself, that format is impressive. What's more impressive, what matters, I think, way more to us, is how God is able to speak through these words to remind everyone who is willing to listen that to follow God, and again, this is in Hebrew context, to follow God means that following the law of, following the law of God Following God brings happiness, brings contentment. As it has been said from this pulpit many times, that doesn't mean that life becomes utterly smooth sailing, but what it does mean is that we are able to, that we are able to closer walk with the way of living that we were created to live, walking in a relationship with the creator of all. So let me ask you on a very basic level, where are you at in your relationship with God, in your walk with God? The scripture reads this way. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways, oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all of your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. So ends the first reading. Our second reading comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy, another Old Testament passage, the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verses 11 through 20. In terms of the rule of thumb as to why and when these words are said, are, are said, people who care, the you know, different commentator write, writers and whatnot, we are told that these words that there are at the tail end of a discourse from Moses to the people of Israel prior to entering into the promised land. So they've been wandering around out in the wilderness for the last 40 years, and they are about to cross into Israel. From everything that I have read about this chapter, include, especially the first 15 verses, in addition to how this section reads, I don't think that's actually when it was placed. These verses speak as if the Israelites have already been sent into exile from the promised land as opposed to being on the brink of entering into it for the first time. But regardless of when it was actually said, the author of them, God, is declaring something that is very important for us. That God is not some, some distant entity that is never intended to be experienced. On the contrary, if we follow how we are being led, we will be led to discover an intimate relationship with the divine that will reveal to us what it means to really live. If we are willing to open our eyes, if we are willing to allow our ears to be unstopped, our minds to truly know and our hearts to feel, we will be led to true life. Are you ready to choose life? The scripture reads this way. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. 
No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe it. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live. You shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your hearts turn away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors Abraham to Isaac, and to Jacob. So end the readings from God's holy word. May you take them into your hearts and truly live them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the ways that people can read these passages is that what God is looking for us to do is follow the rules. And I certainly understand that perspective. So again, let's listen to the psalm very quickly. Happy are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart and do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I will not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all of your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. In those eight verses... There are seven references to keeping the law of God. So again, if that's what you hear, I certainly understand that. I get that. But one of the realities that has has been recrystallized in my heart and my mind over the last few weeks is in through men's group, we've been reading Galatians on Thursday mornings, is that while the law of while the law may be the what, at least for some, it is by no means the why. And here's what I mean. Why does, what does God call for us to do? He calls for us to follow his commandments. So there's the law part. Even as Christians, we still recognize the summarized law as the bar that God is calling for us to strive to. That is the what that we're supposed to do. But why? Why are we called to follow God's direction? Some folks will say, well, God told us to do it. So if you don't do it, you know, that, that's, that's bad. Okay, well, that, that's, that's about as deep as a stone skipping across the water, making no actual diving in sort of impact. Other folks look at the consequences. They hear about what's going to happen if we don't follow God's law, the whole eternally cursed thing, and they say, I don't want that, so I'm going to do whatever you want over here. This sort of thought process approaches God from a negative perspective because you're perpetually worried about what is going to happen when you do something wrong. Not if you do something wrong. When you do something wrong. Now, while I certainly know people who buy into these particular understandings, I very much do not believe that this is how God wants us to follow him. God doesn't want us to be like robots who follow because they don't have a choice. You told me to do it. If I don't do it right, you're going to punish me. And even though the language of the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, speaks glowingly of the fear of the Lord, I very much am in a place of understanding the scripture that God isn't looking for us to, to follow him because we're afraid to do anything else. I know that I'm taking a current assessment of that word, but I'm okay with that. Instead, the reason that God wants us to follow his law is so that we might be led to a wonderfully intimate relationship with the divine where we give of who we are because of the love that we are able to share with the creator of all. God does want us to follow him and do so because when we walk with him as we were created to, then we are able to truly live. What we are told in the scriptures and what we are able to experience when we come into contact with those individuals who are walking with the Lord 
is that when we connect ourselves to, by following how he is leading us, then our lives are blessed. Even blessed beyond measure. Unfortunately, this type of, of hand-in-hand relationship that leads to greater and deeper blessings is something that for a whole lot of the population makes little to no sense. Why? Because the relationships that are around them, their parents, their siblings, their co-workers, their friends, maybe even their own spousal relationships, are at best a struggle, if not something that leans on them in a negative way. For example, way back when, when I was in seminary, there was a large minority of students who refused to speak of God in the masculine. Now, several of them made that stance because they felt that the male pronoun limits how God can be understood. Totally get that one. I can handle that one. However, there was another segment of the crowd that refused to refer to God in the masculine, not because of a theological stance, but because of the horrible relationships that they had with males during their lives. So much of what we think about God is influenced by the relationships that we have with those who are around us. Something that we need to remember is that all of these relationships are influenced by the brokenness of sin. Now, I'm not saying that, that any of these relationships not, might, might not be good in quite a few ways. What I am saying is that we need to recognize and appreciate that the way that God is calling for us to live with Him should not be bound by the imperfections of our fallen world. God is looking and longing for us to trust him with everything that we've got. Even, even, especially the uncomfortable stuff. The stuff that we're going, I don't know where this is coming from, but here it is. And again, it doesn't mean everything's easy. It doesn't mean everything is, is good and hunky-dory, but it can still be blessed because we are walking with God hand in hand. What keeps running through my head is is the Genesis imagery of of Adam and Eve walking in the garden with God. Not bound by any restrictions, just walking with God. And beyond that, we need to recognize the consequences of walking and not walking with God in love. They're not just in relation to ourselves. That's what that statement of choose life so that you and your descendants may live is all about. Because... How we live, it acts as an example to those who are around us, to our loved ones, to our friends, to our co-workers. Much like they can be an example to us, negatively and positively. We can be a positive or not so positive example for them. We model for other people what living a life of faith means. And if we say that we believe in God, if they know that we believe in God, or at the very least go to church... And we act as if our lives and our relationships are without hope. Then what are we saying to the world outside? Not only to ourselves. What are we saying to those who are actually taking us in? We're saying that God's promises to care for us, to love us, when we are connected to him, are nothing more than a lie. Because we're without hope. They're not a lie. When people, when people are able to start to live out that life of loving God with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, just stepping onto that path, loving God, their neighbor as God has first loved them, relationships begin to go stronger. When people commit themselves to God, and I really mean start to turn it all over. It's not a light switch where it's all in or not. It's moving in that direction. Moving in that direction. When we start to turn it over to God. The good, the bad, and absolutely the ugly. That's when love is able to be shared. In truly amazing ways in our relationship. It it allows us to become more and more authentic. One day to the next to the next. Because God is not interested in a relationship. Where we, where we're, you know, the light switch moment. Where we go above and beyond one day. And the next day we just snap back. We're all in, God. We're out. God is looking for us to commit. To stay turned on. And when we have those moments, and they, we will, we do. When we have those moments, when we fall away, to repent. To turn back and say, God, here I am. Following the law 
didn't work because we could never do it all the time. It was an initial entree to allow the humanity to be able to, to see that God wants to be in relationship with them. But it had to be fulfilled. That's where Jesus comes in. Remember one of the most often repeated passages of scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God loves us so much. Wants to be in relationship with us so deeply that he was willing to sacrifice his son for us. That is the sort of sacrificial life that God is longing for us to have. Especially in those days when it feels like we should be doing the exact opposite. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be kind. It doesn't have to be complicated. I know we've heard that refrain over the last few weeks, probably going on a couple of months now, but it's important. It's important to be able to be that rock that doesn't just skip across the water, but that dives in and makes an impact. And we can hear that in terms of stewardship stuff. We can hear that in terms of mission. It is a life, it is a life changing reality. Where are you at and with your walk with God? And if you are able to say, you're able to say right now, it's not so good. Do you realize how good that is? To be able to be open and honest and say, yeah, it's not, it's not so good right now. That's stepping in the right direction. That's being open and authentic. Because walking with God is not that light switch. It is this long bending road that ultimately allows us to be blessed by God in miraculous ways and be a blessing unto the world. Where are you at in your walk with God? Walk with Him. Trust that the love, the care that he has promised is real, it is authentic, it is for you. And know that as you live it out, as you receive it, you will allow that love, that care, that support to be felt in other people's lives as well. We are blessed. We can be a blessing. Let us follow the Lord. Let us choose life. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for continuing to reach out into our lives to, to bring us back again and again and again into the intimate and loving relationships that you have created us to be in with you. God, work through us so that we might be able to place you first and help us to see how in taking this step of faith, we are taking a step toward truly living being blessed, and ultimately being a blessing. God, thank you for today and for the ways that you are reminding us to truly live. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We now have the opportunity to give of our tithes and our offerings. So let us give back to God as God has first given to each of us.
Let's join together in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Loving God, you have shown us your ways and led us toward abundance. You have blessed us and kept us safe. In you we see that we are loved. We offer you our lives, for we have chosen to follow you. We offer you our praise, for your love is great. Use our gifts, our money, and our hearts to establish your realm of love among the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. gather into this place of worship, into this place of sanctuary, we are able to be reminded, reminded of this light that you are calling us to. We're able to hear in the midst of scripture the, the reality of the law. And we know through the gift of your son, we know that following you is fulfilling that law. But not through the letter in allowing the Spirit to come forward, to be felt in everything that we do. So Lord, as we move into our lives, as we move forward in walking with you in faith, help us choose life by allowing your light to shine, by being kind. Mary and Austin, Casey Jack and Carter, for Logan, Kate, Lois and Holly, we pray for Lois and Sue, we pray for Kim and Sue, for Ed and Joanne, we pray for our missionaries in Niger, Jeremy and Susan, for Jan and Steve, for all of our kids, for everyone down in Kusavan and Haiti, for those who are serving in the military connected with our congregation, we pray for Ben and Carlos, for Joel and Nick, for Seppi and Kenneth, for Tanner, Sean, and we do pause, so that we might be able to come to you in the quiet of this moment and hold up to you all the people, all of the situations that are that we carry with us, whether because they are hard or because they are joy-filled. Lord, we carry them. And we carry them. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. 